All right, so we're going to talk about motion variables and motion equations now. This is another way of representing motion, but doing it algebraically instead of graphically or verbally or with pictures. So uh, I'm going to talk about all the different variables that we should know about. Uh, some of the different physical quantities that we already talked about are things like displacement or position. We've talked about velocity. We've talked about acceleration. And we've talked about time. Each one of these has its own letter. Uh, so we will always use x to represent the position in the horizontal direction, or y to represent the position in the vertical direction. Velocity is represented with a v. Acceleration is represented with a lowercase a and time is represented with a lowercase t. So anytime you see those variables, you'll know what they mean. But there is a little bit of added information uh, in, the, in the form of subscripts that shows up. So for example, you'll sometimes come across an x naught. That means the initial position of an object. So x naught means initial horizontal, y naught means initial vertical. Um, if you come across something like xf, or VF, that would be the final velocity or the final position. If you come across something like delta X, that delta means the change in the position. Uh, so you could have delta X or delta V. Uh, and then the last subscripts that are kind of important to keep in mind are things like AX and A sub Y, A sub X, A sub Y which represent acceleration or whatever in the horizontal or in the vertical. So you'll also see things like V sub X and V sub Y uh, for the velocity in the horizontal and the vertical direction. Uh, so that hits all of the different uh, letters, the variables that you might come across. Now let's talk about units. The units of position are always meters, uh, which is represented with an M. The units of time are always seconds, which is represented with an S. So velocity is the change in uh, displacement over time. So change in displacement units over time units. Acceleration is the change in velocity. So that would be meters per second over time. So meters per second over second, which I usually write like this, but you may come across being written like that because mathematically the same. So those are the units that you should get. And if you have units of any other type, if you have miles per hour, or you have hours, or you have miles, uh, or kilometers, you need to immediately convert them into meters. Your math will only work in this class if you do everything in terms of meters and seconds. Even centimeters and things like that are going to throw you off. So always meters, always seconds. Some quick notes to throw in here uh, are on the, uh, displacement. Uh, often it won't tell you what the initial position is. It will just ask you how far it goes. So I suggest when you can get away with it, get in the habit of always calling the initial position in the X or the Y zero, unless the problem tells you how to define it otherwise. For velocity, I want to just mention that you always need to um, get in the habit of using trig uh, for diagonal. If you come across a vector that looks like this for velocity, you have to turn it into V sub X and V sub Y using the, um, the stuff that we learned last week. Uh, for acceleration, uh, we talked about free fall already, and that's probably our big note, is that unless there's something pushing on an object horizontally, it will rarely have a horizontal acceleration. And most of the time, if you have a vertical acceleration, it will be g or 10 meters per second per second. So those are the motion variables and equations. Now let's look at the, uh, or the motion variables. Now let's look at the equations themselves. These are called the kinematic equations, and there are kind of like more different variations of them, but they all kind of fit within, um, there, there's three important ones that you guys should know for now. And then if you find yourself, um, if you find yourself using other ones, you'll kind of learn them as you go. But these are the ones that are on the formula sheet. These are the ones that you're expected to know. So I wrote time and position there um, because there's three kinematic 
equations, and we can separate them using a Venn diagram. We have the equation that uses only time. Notice that it has only a time variable, variable an acceleration variable, which they all have, and some velocity variables, which they all have. But this one has only time in it. It has no position at all. So this one gives us our final position in terms of our initial position and our acceleration and time. Our next equation, and it's not really going to fit in here, so you'll just have to imagine that I fit it in here. Uh, our next equation is this one here. Uh, and notice that it has both position variables and time variables in it. It has two of each, actually. Uh, so this is the, the second kinematic equation, is what I usually call it. Um, I don't think they have really formal names, but I just call it one, two, three, because that's the order they are on the formula sheet. Uh, and this second kinematic equation, it tends to be the one that you have the most questions involving, just because you can ask more detailed questions because it involves time and position. And then finally, our last uh, equation is V, uh, well, I'll write it this one, sure. This one here, uh, the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times A times the change in position, also known as the, uh, the displacement. Notice that this one has no time, it's only position, uh, and that's why, I, um, why I, I use this Venn diagram to help me separate them out. Uh, so those are the equations, those are the variables. Now we're going to be practicing uh, over the next couple days, fake, pulling the variables out of the problem, using the equations to figure out what they tell us, and then going a step further and starting to convert from these algebraic um, understanding and being able to push them into what the graphs would look like uh, that connect to these equations and what the stories that could be told using them uh, would be. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.